I want to build a home. And there's the plot of land for sale. What are the steps? Like, how do I take a four-acre plot of land and put a house on it? Who's, okay. Where do we start? Who starts first? Is it the... You just you start first, Bob. Your yes, yes. your survey. You do the surveys that. So Bob, company. Well, typically what we would have done is we talked about the big two hundred acre farm, and a developer would have come along and said, "I want to build, subdivide into some lots so that people can buy them." We would design the lots to meet the zoning, whether it be one acre, two acre, four acre zoning. Uh, we would design the roadway. Mm -hmm design the drainage to serve that roadway so that it it's par properly treated and the utility lines and and if there's town water where would that go now we have a plot of land that's on a good road vacant ready for your house you would probably hire a builder and we would work for the with the builder and usually stake the lot lines so that he knows where that lot is with the setbacks so that he can stay within those setbacks and now decide what type of house you want and work with you and the architect and John. Some property here in Nashua on DW Highway. You know it well because you're, you're, you've done the land survey and everything of it. Uh, Annie and I photographed it for your engineering firm. Tell us about the, the I guess it's going to be a little strip mall. Yes, yes. It, Let's start with that. When we went there, when we first went there, there was an existing building. I think it was a gas station. Correct. Right. Let's go to that commercial, that whole commercial zoning, everything about that little building. Somebody purchased it. The buyer, per uh, some buyer purchased that developer. Take it from there, Bob. Well, it's a site on Daniel Upshner Highway, which is heavily commercialized, and it's near Walgreens in front of DW Plaza, and as you mentioned, it was a former gas station. It sat there idle, deteriorating for years. Uh, the developer came along, and basically, uh, we went to the planning board to convert it to a, a little strip, uh, one building, strip uh, mall, so to speak, for four, five, six new, new establishments. So we have to, when we do this, now now we have to look at all the rules that apply to that. It's a new development. So we have to know what, roughly get an idea of what's going in there. Some retail shops, planning for a couple restaurants. There's parking regulations for each type of those uses. We have to make sure that the lot can serve both the building and provide enough parking. The parking has to be handicap accessible. We have to make sure that we have enough open space. You can't put pavement completely on a piece of property. The town has rules that there has to be some landscaping to, to keep it aesthetically pleasing. So we have to plan for that. We also have to make sure the storage and drainage facilities are adequate. So we had to find out where they were, what elevations they were at. So we had to build the building a little bit higher to make sure we can get into the sewer system and into the drainage. Drainage today is getting more and more complicated. Uh, the, the, the rules basically are that you cannot have any water from a storm leave the site at an increased volume or rate of flow than was there when it was previous previous development. Interesting. But in this case, we had a gas station with paving, so it was already developed, and so we had to compare that drainage to what we were building. Uh, more and more, they want us to percolate the water into the ground rather than to put it into the drain system because basically all that water over time is, is used for drinking water. It's purified. I don't mean to interrupt you. What is percolating? Seeping into the ground. Uh, the, the, the old philosophy was put it in a pipe, put it in a stream, and it gets down to the ocean and it's gone. But all of this water is, is soaking back into the ground or was for our water supply. It goes into the to the Merrimack River, the National River, and it supplies us water. If you if you constantly take this water away, it's de deteriorating our, our available resources. So now the, the philosophy is to, to get as much of it back into the ground so we can reuse it, so it can be filtered through the soil and we can reuse it. The other problem you have that's happened over time is with increased development, if you flush all this water immediately into streams, it causes flooding, massive flooding downstream because of all the impervious areas paving and roadways if we hold that back in detention areas 
storage basins on each lot, it slows down that, that water after a storm and decreases the flooding. Just just recently, the government, we have rainfall charts that we use when we're designing these things. And because of global warming and the increased precipitation, we're now updating, the government has updated the uh, rainfall charts, and we're, it's going to be more intense design now because we're anticipating more rainfall going forward. So all these things have to be taken into consideration. And again, the zoning, how far we set back these facilities from the lot lines. We had to design all of these things to meet the code and go to the planning board and get this approved. Wow. Just for this little, you know? It's, just, it's, it gets more and more involved. And, and the fire department gets involved for maneuvering of vehicles and how they can fight a fire, how oh, close can they get too. to the building, uh, the public works. If you're affecting any public streets, they have to look at the plans. Uh, so a number of city agencies review every one of these plans to make sure that everything has been thought of properly. So it's a long process. And it goes through a rigorous review by the city and the state sometimes, and then uh, goes to the planning board.